the closer we get to Christmas, I don't think the baking really stops. I don't think the cookies stop. The candies don't stop. What it is is it becomes more like togetherness and things that your family's really gonna enjoy. And for me, that always means caramels. I don't know, in the Midwest, caramels, which are chewy, kind of soft caramels, they're a Midwest staple. And you always knew the people growing up, I feel like, that made the good caramels. Like, oh, you want one of her caramels, they're really good. Or it's just a thing. And so why don't we all just make the best caramels? That's what these are, they're super easy. It's kind of like candy making in general. It's some simple ingredients, you just have to watch the temperature on the stove, but everything else is pretty carefree. So, and again, I always say a heavy bottom kettle. Why do I say that? Because they heat up evenly and they disperse the heat evenly. So it's gonna be a better way. You don't get hot spots. Things don't burn or stick as quickly. It's just a lot easier. So in my kettle, I'm gonna right away put some heavy cream. So unlike other sugar candies we make that kind of become more of a hard crack, like a brittle or a toffee, this is a softer caramel, kind of chewy. So you want, the cream in it. Now you're gonna think you can't cook cream. You can cook cream and that's good because that's what's gonna give it its good consistency. We're gonna put some butter. This has all the Christmas staples. I'm gonna call it the, like, the food pyramid of Christmas. Sugar, butter, heavy cream, oh yeah, and corn syrup. Now, okay, let's be honest, no. I don't sit and just eat all the caramels. They are great for gift giving. They're great to just have a treat every so often. They're so fun to give away and they're delicious. So I'm gonna put in the corn syrup. Again, corn syrup is what gives it that really good texture. It's what makes it really consistent, makes it cook evenly. It really is the best way. And no, I know what I, I know the questions I'm gonna get. Is there an alternative to corn syrup? You know, I don't know of a good one. There are different things you can try to do, but for this, I don't know. And this is what works. So make them once a year, enjoy them, and just have a good Christmas. That's what it's all about. So we're gonna just put a little bit of salt in there yet. Then we're putting this right into the stove. It's kind of an odd mixture, especially when you're thinking of a candy, because usually you don't wanna put things like heavy cream and all that together. But for this is exactly what you need. So I'm gonna just stir it just to make sure that no sugar is sticking on the bottom. We're gonna let it come up to a simmer and then we're just gonna let it cook. The caramel mixture's on the stove. It's heating up, it's gonna begin to simmer. So I always like to have everything ready when you're doing anything with a hot kind of sugar mixture. That's meaning the pan needs to be ready too. That way when it is done over on the stove, you can bring it over and have everything ready to go. So I have my pan here and I spray both the pan just to, Again, essential, make sure that nothing's gonna stick. And then I put the parchment in. So a parchment sling like this, and I just kind of bent it so it makes sure to kind of fall over the edges. That way it just doesn't hit the caramel or wanna like fold in and stick to it. This is just gonna help ensure that you can get it out easier. You know, the caramel is soft, it is really chewy. It's kind of pliable and bendable, but it sometimes wants to stick to something. So this is just really easy that way to get it off. I then will spray this even just to make sure, because at the end what we're gonna do is, we are gonna take it all out after it's cooled, cut it into pieces, so you have like little candies. It's like you're a candy maker. What is better at Christmas? You're gonna be everyone's favorite candy maker. So this is ready to go. I have my vanilla here ready to go, so when it hits the temperature, I can put that right in, pour it in, and put it all right into here. So we will be back. We will show you. I don't think we're simmering yet. We're not. So as that melts, we'll kind of show you along the process. And then guys, we're gonna make caramels. It's so easy. So you can see the mixture's really starting to cook. You wanna have a big enough pan. It's not gonna come over this pan. This is at least a four quart pan. Do nothing smaller than a four quart. That's where you just wanna watch it and let it cook. It's gonna simmer, it's gonna boil, it's gonna bubble, but it needs to get up to the right temperature, 248 degrees, which it can be you know, a degree or two around that. But that's where you're gonna get the good color. So at the moment, it just needs to cook. It needs to continue going until we get that nice rich color. We will take the temperature. You don't want to guess it, okay? You need a thermometer. This is just about done. You can see the color has completely changed. It's a nice kind of rich amber color. And what I'm doing is, you can do a candy thermometer that just fits onto the side, the traditional type, if that's what you're used to. I use an instant read thermometer, kind of like you would use for meat, but you need to make sure it gets to a really high temperature because I like to go around and take points out of all over the mixture so I can get a really good reading and make sure I don't touch the bottom of the pan. If you touch the bottom of the pan, it is not a good reading. It's gonna be way too hot. It won't look correct. So I just sit here and I kind of slowly stir and I see what temperature I'm at. And now I'm seeing that I'm reaching the temperature. We're doing good. So I'm gonna turn off the heat. 
I always make sure, you know, this caramel kind of get on it right away. So I like to wipe off my, I'm so picky about things like that. So I'm gonna bring this over. I love like, you smell the whole house, just is, has this beautiful kind of caramelly, rich, buttery smell, and I love that. We're gonna add some vanilla. It's gonna bubble. The alcohol in the vanilla, that liquid, really is gonna make everything bubble, but the flavor's gonna stay. So the alcohol, that, that's what pure vanilla is, is gonna cook off, but oh, we get that wonderful vanilla smell. So we're stirring that in. If you don't stir it in well, you will get streaks of color. You don't want those. And we're gonna pour it right in to our prepared pan. See, this is why you want everything prepared because then you don't have to worry and rush around at the end and worry that you're gonna miss something or that the temperature's gonna change. So we're gonna pour that all out. Look at that beautiful color. Look how it just kind of falls into place. I make sure to get it all out because why wouldn't you want it all? You don't wanna waste this, this is too good. So as it is sitting, as it is cooling, you don't want the temperature to change too quickly. So I don't like to put it in the fridge or in the freezer. What I will do is let it come down to room temperature, then I might put it into my cool garage or something, but I don't want it to change too drastically. But what you can do at this stage, what do we all love? Sea salt caramel. So you can put some sea salt on it, just kind of on top of it. Sometimes depending on it is, like if certain, like when I do it for my nieces or nephews, they don't always like the big salty punch. So I'll just do it on like half of it. You can kind of do that whatever you want but it's just a great time to add that good salty. The reason we do a sea salt, it's bigger pieces. It has a more briny kind of saltiness to it, which I really love. That really plays well with kind of those different flavors in the caramel. So I'm gonna sprinkle the salt on. I'll probably leave half of it without. Then we're gonna let it cool. Room temperature, that could take four to six hours. If you leave it at room temperature for like an hour and then pop it into a cooler place or a cooler room, it could go quicker. It just kind of depends on your environment. Then we're gonna cut it up. It's caramel time, you guys. Are you, I know, you're so excited. So the caramel has sat. You can see we did the one half with the sea salt. We used the bigger pieces of sea salt so it really kind of stayed on top and didn't just melt into it. So we made sure to oil the pan well and the parchment because look, it comes right out. So this is where you can see it's a really set up caramel. You can actually sit here and you could bend this back and forth if you want to, but it's also set enough. Like look, it just bends. Guys, we're gonna have a good, chewy, delicious caramel. I put it on a cutting board. And I'm using a big knife only because then it makes it a little easier. So there's really no right or wrong, you know, way to cut the sizing. It's kind of more like whatever you think. I kind of think it's slightly probably bigger than bite size what I do, but guys, it's caramel who, no one is gonna be complaining. No. So we're just gonna cut them up. And again, it's kind of, I don't know, I just eyeball it could measure it, but then it'd be like, why? So as I'm cutting them, you either want to cut pieces of wax paper, parchment paper, whatever it is to help roll them in. You can also buy pre-cut candy wrappers. You don't have to, but if you're gonna be making a lot of these and it makes a decent amount, it just makes it easier. So I'm gonna roll it up and this has that wax coating so it doesn't like seep through. I'm gonna twist it, you guys. That looks so good, look at those. So they're not all wrapped, but <laughs> that's okay. This is what you can see is how easy and fun this is and how perfect it is to give away gifts or having a bowl around your house. I think there is nothing more, I don't know, special, just like enriching, I don't know what it is, but then to have homemade candies at your house as opposed to just a bowl of candy that you buy, still good. So, of course, I'm gonna try it. Mm. I love it with the sea salt. To me, that's like a must, but you can go either way. I didn't put a hole in my mouth because I'd be chewing it forever. They're really chewy. They're really, they're like a rich, buttery, softer than a toffee, but you get all those flavors. And the salt, it just like explodes the flavors and makes everything just even better. I hope you try these out because I think these are one of those things that if you become the person that makes these, you're gonna be everyone's favorite person at Christmas. Cause it's gonna be one of those things where has such and such given you caramels? No. What? Yeah, you wanna be that person. So, as always, what helps me the most when you share these videos around. Share them, tag people, so everyone can see how easy this is. Tag your pictures to me, the recipes in the description, but also on my website, wiseguy.com, where there's other amazing recipes and so many more information. So keep checking back, keep tagging people, keep tagging me, 
I love to see it and I love spending Christmas with you. So go make some caramels. They're good. <laughs>